Hello, a couple of people have asked me to make a video about the build of my pizza oven. And there's a couple of things to say about it before I start. First of all, I used a kit. Now it's easy enough to do it without a kit, but with the kit I felt that um, you got everything you needed and it was the peace of mind really that actually at the end of it I would get an item that was going to be fit for purpose. Having done it and got a little bit more experience I'd be interested to try and do it again without a kit. Um, but. Uh, if you do that, then uh, if you have never built anything before, then I would suggest spending a bit of time online, having a look. And uh, there's plenty of good groups, good videos, etc. on YouTube, um, groups on Facebook about uh, building a pizza oven, and it's well worth a look. Uh, the way I did it, I got a kit from a company called Pizza Oven Supplies, uh, based in Stoke-on-Trent. They've been really good. Uh, they supplied pretty much everything you need. Um, the... Obviously you need a few tools, um, but from them you get um, all of the, the bricks that you need to build the oven. You get um, the dome, which is pre-cast uh, out of a factory uh, concrete. You get, um, basically the bricks are cut to uh, the right shape. You get, if you've got sides, I've got some serving sides on mine, um, and you get two sort of stone worktops. They do need a little bit of trimming just to fit onto the oven. Uh, you get a chimney with a flue damper. You get the cooking surface, the refractory tile bricks that, um, that you cook on. Uh, so they're pretty good as well. And you get a bag of um, refractory cement and grog, uh, which you use for pointing up the expansion gap inside. On top of that, you'll need tools, you'll need sand, and you'll need cement. Uh, cement, you'll need... I used about nine bags altogether, uh, and I've got best part of a bag left over. And I used about 26 bags of sand. Um, again, I've got about one bag left over, and I wasted a little bit, so you can probably get away with a little bit less. You'll need about half a ton. Uh, other tools that you'll need, I'll uh, just have a look here. Uh, so you'll need basically an angle grinder for cutting the worktops and uh, anything else that needs cutting. There's quite a few uh, to start with. All the bricks that they give you are the right shape, but when it comes to putting them around a dome, there's a few that will need trimming. So an angle grinder with a, a diamond tip blade is a must. That costs about 30, 35 quid from Amazon. Absolute bargain. Um, some safety goggles to go with that as well. Uh, a bucket is a must. Some plasticizer, the cement. Uh, that was about eight quid, I think, for a massive tub. Uh, and there's still at least half of that left. Um, a brush is useful. Pens for measuring out stuff. Um, you'll need a, a gun for your fireproof silicon. Uh, that's supplied with the kit. You'll need hearing protection for when you're chopping up stones. Um, you need a chisel and club hammer for chopping bricks in half. Uh, this is your, your biggest friend, is um, your... Um, your trowel for laying your mortar and uh, a pointing trowel as well which is very handy uh, for just finishing off and making it look nice and neat at the end some decent gloves um, these ones I'm not sure what they are but they're basically rubber all the way around so um, it lets you get your hand into the cement without covering yourself in it which is really useful standing knife is useful and a spade and that's pretty much all I've used the other thing that I had to borrow off a friend, and I would suggest it's well worth borrowing, is a cement mixer. Uh, because if you're mixing half a tonne of cement by hand, you'll be knackered. Um, it's worth buying one, to be honest, and then selling it again afterwards, uh, if it comes to it. But if you get on Facebook, find a friend who's got one, well worth bothering with, well worth it. I measured out the circle for the base using a piece of string and a Sharpie, so that I could get um, measure out a circle, uh, like a compass, for the internal dimension of the um, of the round oven base. So when it comes to cutting breeze blocks, um, I found that I uh, I bought an angle grinder 
uh, for the purpose of, of doing this. Even with a diamond tipped blade, it doesn't really cut through solid concrete blocks, uh, not bruised blocks, sorry, the, uh, the solid concrete building blocks for the oven floor. Um, what I have done though, is I've used the angle grinder to just sort of gouge some lines on there. And then uh, using the old trusty club hammer and, uh, and this, then uh, if you pick away along the line and then do down the sides and then flip it over and do the same on the other side, then it should just uh, fall apart nicely. Like so, uh, straight down the middle. So when it comes to laying the bricks, uh, the round bricks uh, are quite awkward. Some of them end up with quite big mortar joints. Uh, as you see there, it's quite a large mortar joint. Um, and what I've found is that it doesn't really matter as long as you kind of even it up overall and make sure that when you, uh, when you put them in like that, make sure that you um, point it up well and kind of backfill the, the missing bits. Um, with the bricks that I've got, you can see this, I've alternated uh, frogs up and frogs down. I, you know, one way, one that way and one that way, because uh, that kind of evens out the, uh, the pattern. The instructions are not entirely clear about where to put wall ties. So I've used um, a little bit of um, my own sort of thoughts on the matter and I'm putting them essentially here between the outer wall and the inner wall. And I've done that at both the sixth um, layer of bricks and I'm doing another section after the ninth layer as well um, I'm not entirely sure it's necessary but whatever um, better safe than sorry another good idea I think would be to put some uh, in uh, along the arch and again that's not mentioned in the instructions but it's probably not a bad shout um, I haven't found a useful way to do it so I'm still I'm in an R and about that one if I get any good ideas then I'll let you know with these side walls, I found it easier um, to, it's probably not the best brickiest way of doing it, but rather than to start at one edge and work all the way around, to start at the ones that are really crucial measurements so you can get that flush and level, and the same on that side, and the same in the corner so it doesn't end up sticking out if you run out of room, and then simply insert the missing bricks in there. Um, whether that's the best technique, I don't know, but it means that you can get it exactly um, right angles and exactly level rather than finding that you've used a little bit too much mortar in the middle and it sticks out too much at the end and leaves it looking untidy. So this is the stage where we fit the base of the oven on. Um, as you can see I've put some packing here which I've made out of granite um, placemats because the uh, concrete blocks on the inside weren't quite as tall as the bricks were on the outside. That's really through my uh, sloppy measuring rather than anything else. Um, essentially the, the mortar joints were too fat on the way up. Um, but in order to pack it, it needs a good solid material, slate or um, let's say tiles or uh, in this case granite, uh, which seems to work quite well. Just use the, uh, the diamond cutter and it goes through it like a half through butter um, and I've set them on there. So that's nice and level now for the, uh, the oven base. Um, I'm going to put a good thick layer of mortar on here and around the sides as well. Essentially I want most of the weight taken uh, on the concrete blocks rather than on these bricks, especially the cold oak ones. I don't want them to end up having too much weight on that and that's uh, cracking the joints here. Uh, the other thing to note is, uh, just by the instructions, I've not done the arch yet. Put it up to here and I'm going to leave it so that I can get access through here to lay the back of the oven uh, rather than trying to clamber over. So I've just fitted the oven floor and um, it's relatively straightforward. It goes on pretty much as you'd expect, um, but the actual height of the of each side of this isn't necessarily exactly equal. Um, like all of the, uh, the concrete bits are kind of hand finished, so there's a little bit of uh, unevenness. So uh, it was a case of adjusting the amount of water on one side. Um, 
bit more on that side, a bit less on that side, and it's made it pretty much level. Um, any slight indiscrepancy that's still there, I'm going to take out while I fit in the, um, the cooking surface on the top of there. Um, so it's, it's gone on quite easily. It's very much a two-man job. Um, you'll struggle to, to lift them by yourself and position them. Before I put the mortar on, I lifted them on and put them on dry. Um, and then marked on the bricks exactly where they were going to go so that they're nice and level at the front and um, at the distance at the sides. Um, incidentally, this little gap down here, until now, I've been filling it full of almost spare cement at the end of each day um, and any kind of other rubble that I can find. Uh, it's still got a little letterbox there for putting rubbish in, so for the moment I can still keep on doing that. Once I've put the dome on and covered it, that's going to be the end of that little game. So something else to do with it. This is the oven floor. Um, when it arrived, these numbers on here were pretty much obscured um, through dust and everything. So it took me a couple of minutes to get them right. Uh, it's worth highlighting the numbers again though to make sure that you can get them on in the right order once you're laying them down. Um, essentially, they're numbered from one all the way through to 14 all the way around. Depending on what kit you get, if you get a kit, then it'll be different. But um, yeah, they fit nicely, they should fit nicely. It's worth taking the time to get them laid out before you put them on the oven floor so that it goes in smoothly. Uh, the rest of the bricks are all just the same and there's three rows of four bricks, uh, which is all straightforward. A couple of them have got dinked corners, so I've tried to make sure that those dinked corners are on the underside. Um, that's the only other thing that's really worth highlighting at this stage. So I've just finished building the, uh, the bottom arch, which is probably the most technical bit so far. Um, it's surprisingly straightforward. I've made this format out of fiberboard and uh, just laid the bricks across the top um, even prior to cementing anything. Uh, I, prior to starting anything as well, I used a, um, a coat hanger um, as a, uh, a strengthener through this and I got a pair of pliers and just bent it into the shape before I even started cementing anything and just checked it to make sure it fitted in between the, uh, the bricks. And then after placing them on, I've just cemented the top initially and then gone around and pointed up underneath, etc. afterwards and uh, pushed into the mortar the, uh, the bent coat hanger um, to strengthen it. And uh, I've put a couple of braces on either side just to um, provide a bit of support, prevent the, uh, the sides splaying out, although they seem fairly sturdy, actually. Um, and, well, that's pretty much it. So I've just laid the oven floor, which was probably the hardest bit so far, because um, I had to do it again. Uh, basically the first time I tried putting a bed of mortar across the whole thing and then placing the bricks on, starting from the front and working back, and it didn't work. Because essentially if you get any kind of um, mortar at all in between the bricks, then um, they don't sit together properly. So for the second go, I put a bit of mortar across the front, placed one brick down, then the next one I held right up against it and then slid it down the side and then tapped it down. The other thing that I've done is I've angled them ever so, ever so slightly like that so that essentially if you get your you know, scrape, it, it slides straight across. Whereas if it, if this one was raised slightly that way, it would slide in and stop and that would be really annoying. Uh, so I started at the front, did four and then butted up against it and slid it down into place the same this one so it slid in the corner and then slid down to make sure there's no mortar in between the joints. So we're about to lift the dome onto the oven. Uh, so I've put some wood down just to protect the uh, the tiles so that I don't damage them and uh, the, the oven dome comes in three parts so the back part is kind of half of this hemisphere and then the two front parts either side of the door uh, come separately. So the plan is that we're going to get three people to lift it, uh, lift it over here and then we'll put it slightly too far back and then slide it back forwards into position. Uh, it goes on dry, so that there's no uh, mortar for it to sit on, uh, just so that any thermal expansion doesn't cause a crack. Um, but then mortar's sort of thrown in from the outside afterwards, and again, sort of down the side of the, um, of the refractory tiles there. Um, fireproof mortar and, um, and grog is, is put in there. Uh, before I cement anything, I'm going to 
rest the two halves of the front on just to check that they line up uh, true and see if any packing is needed underneath. Any packing, uh, I've got some uh, bits of stone, uh, that type of thing that I've been uh, that I've cut off the uh, sailing sides. So once the oven dome's on, it gets covered in a foil vapour layer which keeps moisture out of the dome. That's held together with bits of duct tape, uh, aluminium tape. And then over the top of that goes a layer of a fire blanket insulation. So in the instructions, the, uh, the dome bricks kind of start from immediately after the front arch. But on this one, we've changed the mould slightly. And so we've, what we've got is um, this front arch kind of extends back a little bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to put another uh, horizontal brick out here to support another row of bricks which is going to go up kind of just behind these, sit just behind these, then over the dome here, up the chimney, and the same around the front of the chimney. Uh, the front of the chimney bricks will sit actually on the arch, and then, um, and then we're going to start going around the dome after that. On top of the insulation blanket, there's chicken wire which is tightened up by a pair of pliers and then it's been rendered and then bricks over the outside. Um, there's a couple of things that have changed slightly from the actual um, the plans. Firstly, these bricks here have been added in just to support um, slightly further forwards these bricks coming around here so that they meet up with the arch. Um, that's just because the, the actual dome design changes every now and then and I just wanted it to look nice and neat. Um, other thing, on top of the chimney stack, um, there's going to be on here a slate. The slate's not arrived yet. I found a, a slate table runner on Amazon and I've got a couple of those come in uh, which I'm going to chop a, a hole out for the chimney to fit in. Uh, so that should fit on there uh, and sit quite nicely. At the minute it's just got some, some rocks on it. I'm going to also fit some doors on here, which I think I'm going to make from pallet wood, just so I can keep a stash of kindling and wood in there with a little bit of protection from the rain. Um, I mean, the worktops keep it protected from the rain, but that's about it. Um, other points to note, the worktops, and more importantly, the oven mouth tiles tilt forward very slightly, just so that any rain that lands on doesn't end up draining into the oven but it sort of drains forward, as you can see there, to keep the inside of the oven nice and dry, so it doesn't get all damp in there, because uh, that would ruin your day. But on the whole, pretty pleased with it. It works really well. Winner. So this is the finished pizza oven. Um, it's pretty much exactly as per the plan uh, from Pizza Oven Supplies. I've added some doors on under the serving sides. These are just made from pallets that all the stuff came on. You can see I've put some cross braces in. Uh, essentially, I've cut it all down to size, um, measured up the height there, and I made it about an inch shorter just to make sure that there's enough room so that it can swing to and fro without uh, without snagging on anything. And I've put some cross braces on. I just basically laid all the pieces out, laid the cross braces out with some wood glue on, uh, and then nailed them into place. And they seem to be holding uh, just fine. I've covered it with tea coil just to uh, protect it a little bit. I might put some varnish or some uh, wood dye on later. Uh, these uh, iron hinges I've got off Amazon, uh, they're just the ticket and it's just held shut with a bolt, um, which does just the ticket. This one's going to house extra wood um, to go in with there so I don't run out. And this side, I've just got one of the tools hanging up in there, um, which might just keep it nice and dry. Uh, and out of the elements, so that's it. I'm going to put some masonry sealer um, on there, some just to keep the uh, the water out of the, the stonework. But um, on the whole, it's pretty much finished now. Um, what else have I done? I've added a cowl on the top. Uh, that was just a cheap one from eBay. The overall cost of the build was about seventeen hundred pound, I think. Um, about fifteen hundred pound of the initial materials plus. Uh, an extra probably £200 of uh, other bits and pieces, um, but overall not cheap, but a lot cheaper than it uh, than it could have been, especially if I'd got someone else to do it. But I'm really pleased with the result. The food that comes out of it's excellent, which is the main thing, and I think it really looks nice, particularly with the doors. The doors, dead cheap to make. Um, I think it cost about 30 quid for the hinges and the bolts, which is relatively expensive, I suppose, but... Um, it sets it off nicely, and in the scheme of things, well worth spending that extra little bit of money. Anyway, hope that's been a useful video. Uh, if you've got any questions, just ask in the comments.